Monday. Well, Republicans now have a razor thin margin in the House that they control and Democrats have a slim majority in the Senate. So what can they agree on that President Biden will actually go along with? We begin our conversation this morning with Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. Congresswoman, thanks for being here on Up Close. Thank you. I want to begin with a migrant crisis because this certainly is now on our doorstep and we're dealing with it here. We heard Mayor Adams sounding the alarms, talking about the $12 billion that it's going to cost the city over the next three years. Congress, we know, led by the GOP, passed that H.R. 2 months ago. President Biden pushing back on that. Democrats raising other plans. So I'm curious from you, what what part of the Democratic plan, because they're calling for more judges for immigration process, they're calling for more Border Patrol agents. So is there any part of the Democratic plan that you agree with? Uh, sure, I support more agents. And I support more judges to process these individuals and hear these cases because we know that more than half of the individuals claiming asylum do not have legitimate cases. They've created a tremendous backlog into the system where people have been waiting are now waiting nearly a decade to be heard. Um, the issue is, though, we have to stop the unsustainable flow. And the only way we're going to do that is if we revert back to some of the policies of the previous administration, requiring people to once again uh, claim asylum from the next safe country country. Uh, they shouldn't be paying the drug cartels to come over the southern border by any means. That is dangerous. That is not in our best interest. It's not in the migrants' best interest. So we need to return to a safe process where people can apply from the next safe country, then have their asylum cases heard in a, in a reasonable amount of time um, here in the United States. Uh, but we should not be doing this catch and release that we're seeing happening where we're releasing people into the interior. It has gotten so bad that if you talk to Customs and Border P Protection, and look, my, a bunch of my colleagues just went down again to the border. They tell us straight out. The bottom line here is that they cannot vet everyone that's coming over the border. They are releasing people into the interior. We know there are people on the terror watch list that have been caught. We know that fentanyl is killing Americans in record numbers. We know that 1.2, over 1.2 million individuals have snuck in. Those are the ones that are not claiming any asylum. They just want to come in undetected. Who are they? Where are they? What are their intentions? That's what I'm concerned about. And so I think there is a compromise to be made here, but we need Senator Schumer, if he's not going to pass our bill, then pass your own bill. Once the Senate shows us their priorities, we can reconcile the differences and get a piece of legislation done, because certainly we don't see President Biden rescinding his executive orders that got us in this mess to begin with. Well, you mentioned trying to pay for all of this, and I know there is a thin majority that the Republicans hold right now in the House. And so when it comes to it, you talk about on the Senate side, some of your colleagues in the House have said that, you know what, we're not going to vote for a budget bill and actually fund the government, potentially leading to a partial government shutdown if the Senate and the Democrats don't agree full throat with this H.R. 2. Is that an approach that you support? Well, look, I, I believe in negotiation. I believe that we're, we're one third of the government Republicans in the House. We're not certainly not going to get everything that we want. And we have to give a little if we're going to reach an agreement. And so I don't expect everything in H.R. 2, although I think that's the ideal piece of legislation. But certainly I want to see the border security measures, the things that are really going to stem this unsustainable flow get passed. And I think we should be using our leverage to negotiate with the Senate. But again, we can't negotiate if the Senate doesn't do anything like they need to pass a bill first so we can see what their priorities are and then we can reconcile what what many of the members do not support is giving more money to the Department of Homeland Security to just process paperwork. I mean, to continue this unsustainable flow, we want actual border border security measures mm -hmm. that will stop the sex trafficking, that will stop the fentanyl from coming over, that will make sure we're vetting people. And 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 quite frankly, you have you have millions of people from what, 140 different countries from around the world. Many are using fake identification to get in. As I mentioned, we talk about the terror watch list and the people that were caught on it. And this is a serious situation in a post 9-11 world. We need to be vigilant. We can be continue to always be a, a country of immigrants and be compassionate, but we got to do it in an orderly way, the way we've always done in this country. Congressman, you talked about coming together and trying to build some sort of coalition to tackle these huge issues that affect all of us here in this country. We are bumping up against a deadline. I believe the first deadline is January 19th to be able to pass this budget bill to continue to fund the government. The next one, I think, is February 2nd. How confident are you that you're going to be able to get your party on board, the Senate on board, and something that President Biden will actually sign off on. 
Look, I think that we can make some significant inroads, quite frankly, if, if they want more judges to uh, reduce the case log, you know, the case that's backed up for decades. I, I support those more judges. In fact, I think I think that's that's one of the solutions I've actually proposed. Um, if we want to see more people get visas so they can come and work and, and, and fill some of the labor shortages that we have in this country, I support that. Uh, but I but we need to do this in an orderly process, and that means securing the border border first and giving our Customs and Border Protection the tools that they are requesting, the technology, the manpower, the tools to do their job. Uh, that in itself could be a small package. It may not resolve all our issues, mm -hmm. but that is a great start. And so I would love to see something like that happen. That would be common sense. Uh, it would actually get to this issue where we're not seeing all these buses, all these individuals coming to New York City. The mayor say it's bankrupting our city. It's destroying New York City. Uh, and so Senator Schumer, who's from New York City, can help us resolve this issue. I want to ask you a couple of, of other issues and talk about a couple of other issues because I know that you were able to secure some funding for the World Trade Center Health Program. What was that funding or what is that funding going to be able to allow that program to do? Well, this is critical funding to make sure the program is fully funded through 2029. And again, this is another bipartisan effort, right? The New York delegation, uh, you know, this, uh, a, a Congressman uh, Anthony D'Esposito and Andrew Garbarino played a huge role as members of the of the Homeland Security Committee, Senators Schumer and Gillibrand. Look, bipartisan, bicameral, we all believe that we need to take care of our first responders. Uh, they were there for us. Um, they are now continuing to die from non 11 related illnesses and we need to make sure that the health care program is there to provide them with the care that they need and so we were joined this week with fdny nypd port authority um, members and their unions uh to to acknowledge the work of congress to make sure that they did you know and they did the right thing this year uh and we we made sure that the money was there and i'm very happy about that because especially in my community of staten island southern brooklyn uh, we are seeing so many people passing away from these 9-11 related illnesses. In fact, we're seeing more of our firefighters uh, who have died from 9-11 related illnesses than we saw on September 11th, the day itself. And so critical issue, we're gonna continue to push uh, in coming years to make sure that this program is fully funded. Congresswoman, about 90 seconds left, but I'm curious because you've been on the longest recess of, of this term for Congress, so you've been back in the district. What are people telling you? What are your constituents telling you that they want you to focus on? What are you hearing from the people? They, they want border security. That is a big issue that I'm hearing all across the city from Republicans, independents, and Democrats. They want public safety. They want Albany to continue to fix that bail law, which has led to so many drug traffickers uh, and other criminals being released back onto the streets. Uh, they want to make sure that we're tackling inflation. And so the House passed legislation that would address the energy needs of this country to reduce energy costs, to reduce gas, gas costs, to reduce food costs. Because remember, you've got transport food and gas prices impact that and it's increasing our food prices. So these kitchen uh, table issues, the pocketbook issues are what I'm hearing about most. I'm proud that the House has taken um, steps to pass these, like we've passed legislation to address a lot of these issues. Uh, we need the Senate to pass our bills, uh, but let's see what we can do in the bike. Uh, cameral bipartisan way to continue to chip away at these issues, but we need to have cooperation. And again, I see the extremes, uh, you know, when we have a, a bill where we actually negotiate and get to a resolution, the far right, the far left, don't vote for it, but everyone else in the middle, probably 300 members do support it. And I think you're gonna see more of that with the slim uh, majority that we have in the house and the, the even slimmer majority that's in the Senate. And we have about 30 seconds left, but to that point, as we're now in an election year, are you hopeful that we can come together and find some common ground? I feel like we don't live on the margins as, a, as the communities, whether it's Brooklyn or Staten Island or Queens or the Bronx or Manhattan. Do you, are you hopeful that we can find that common ground in the middle? I'm hopeful, but the reality is you you we have different interests, right? We have people who want open borders in this country. We have people who think it's perfectly perfectly fine for an individual in New York City to commit 30 crimes, be arrested 30 times, and then be released back onto the streets. I mean, this is the reality of the policies we've seen out of the far left. I hope that common sense Democrats mm -hmm. and Republicans can come together to push back on that. But it's hard when you have one party rule, especially in a city or state like ours. We'll be watching it all closely. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you being here up 
on up close. Thank Congresswoman you. Nicole Maliotakis, thank you. All right, joining us now is Democratic Congresswoman 